I got off of work at 3.30 p.m. and was pulling through the drive-thru at a coffee shop that I go to all the time. It's right off the I-5 in this area and has its share of transient folks. The day was pretty nice, albeit a little overcast. There was a guy sitting on the curb at the upper loop of the drive-thru. He was wearing rather rough clothing, lots of layers. He had visible stubble on his face, and his hair looked like it had grown out from being cut short, and was dirty blonde. I saw him and thought, he's sitting pretty close to the road. I hope he won't think I'm driving too close to him. And then, I noticed that he had clear flames coming from his hood and around his head. I was already going slow, but I slammed the brakes and went to put the car in park to jump out and help this guy who was sitting in this parking lot on fire. Before I could open my door, he looked over at me and his expression looked like some combination of exasperation, disgust, and annoyance. He sort of shrugged and the flames went out and he turned away from me. I kept going, kind of dumbfounded, and got my coffee and spent the drive home trying to figure out what the fuck just happened. My initial thought had been that he was smoking and flicked ash and lit his pushback hood on fire, but he didn't have a cigarette when I saw him, and if he was actually on fire, then why wasn't he worried about it, and how did he just put it out like that? I say clear flames because I've seen them before. I used to work in a lab where I wore gloves sprayed with ethanol, and then put my scalpels, etc. in ethanol, and then ran them through a flame. I caught the ethanol on my gloves on fire all the time, and it burns clear, sort of distorting the air, but it's definitely still flame. You smother it to put it out. I honestly don't know what the explanation for this is. I just know what I saw. I was homeless when I was in my early 20s. There was a weekend where I hadn't worked all week because my boss was gone for religious holidays. I didn't have much money, so I ran out before he got back. I didn't eat for two days, and on the morning of the third day, I decided to pray. My prayers were into a specific religious deity. Rather, I called out to the Father Creator of all, that is, was, and will be. I asked that I be fed or be given a way to eat. I clearly heard the loudest whisper scream right into my ear. Clean the park. Clean the park across the street. Now, I was sitting on a bench across from a park, so I was taken aback by the words, but I complied. I got the whole place picked up, and noticed a piece of trash that I had missed. It wasn't trash, but a wallet. In it was a $10 bill, and I saw the ID and realized I knew who it belonged to. I used the money to get something to eat, and later in the day, I saw the person that the wallet belonged to, and I returned it. I explained that I had used the money in it, and I would pay them back in two days when I worked again. But they seemed confused. They told me that there was no money in the wallet. They had taken it all out because they went to a rave, and they usually never kept cash in the wallet. I can't explain it, but I know it happened. So, I believe in the Father, creator of all, that is, was, and will be. And I can never not believe in that entity, because it fed me when I was starving. My grandmother passed away last month. Her urn was sitting in my lap as we drove to the memorial service. Suddenly, 
my mother got a phone call. Now, mind you, my grandmother's phone had already been shut off. So, we get a call, and at first, it just says private number. And then it reads, Mom, which is my grandmother's name and my mother's contacts. But it had no button to let us answer. My mother, brothers, and I just stare, shocked, and we let it ring on the verge of tears. And then it hung up. On the same day, when we went to pick her up from her house, we go in. And her favorite cat is snuggled against her urn sleeping. The same cat that always slept in her lap. This happened about seven years ago, when I was still a teenager. My extended family really loves biking. And they had the great idea to go on a moonlit bike ride. They had heard of others doing it, and we're pretty sure the moon would be bright enough that we wouldn't need flashlights. The bike path was up a mountain, so it would be downhill the whole way if we drove up and started from the top. 9pm rolls around, and all 8 of us head out to the mountain, a 10 mile drive uphill from the base. When we get to the top, the clouds have completely covered the moon, and it's pitch black. I'm feeling a little spooked already because of the tall trees and slight wind that is whispering through them. We all get situated and plan to stick together, but as we start rolling down the mountain, it becomes harder to stay together. All of our bikes were really old, and all of them went varying speeds, so within 15 minutes or so, we had all separated to the point where I couldn't see anyone in front or behind me. The mountain road was covered on both sides by thick pine trees and the moonlight was virtually non-existent because of the clouds. It was terrifying to be suddenly so alone in such a dark forest, so I just kept pedaling as fast as I could. I'm not a superstitious person at all, but I kept getting very bad vibes from the depths of the forest. I almost began to panic and I wanted to stop and wait for some of my family to catch up, but I was too scared to slow down. It took about an hour to get down the winding road, and when I made it to the bottom, everyone was there waiting for me. I wasn't sure how this was possible, because I hadn't seen any of them pass me, and I knew I was in front of at least three of them. They had all just arrived, too, and I asked them how they were in front of me. They shrugged and didn't really care because of the story that my father had just told them. Apparently, about 10 minutes into the bike ride, my father's tire had gone flat. He decided to give up on the ride and walk back up the mountain to the car. The path was downhill the entire way, or uphill if you were walking back up to the car. He recounted that he left his bike to the side of the road and began to walk up the mountain back toward the car. But after about 10 minutes of walking, he came across his bike again. It was as if he somehow walked in a circle, but that was impossible because he had been walking uphill the entire way. My father isn't one to believe in the supernatural and he seemed genuinely confused. We were all horrified by this story, because how the hell did that happen? And how did all my family arrive before me, even though none of them had passed me? The rest of my family also said that they had gotten a very bad feeling during the bike ride. To this day, my father claims this story is true, and there's no explanation that makes sense. My personal theories are skinwalkers, as the mountain is on a Native American reservation, a Navajo to be specific, or maybe aliens, or my father is just pulling an elaborate prank, and I somehow took a different road down the mountain so that my family passed me.
I made it somewhat of a routine to take walks around my neighborhood in the evenings, usually for 15 or 20 minutes, to clear my head. My parents weren't home, and it was dark outside, but I really wanted to get out of the house. I stepped outside my apartment, stepped away from my front door, and began walking. Ahead of me, I could just barely make out a shining speck of light all the way at the end of the narrow path. The path is lit up enough that you can see around yourself, but the very end was dark. I usually went this way, but never noticed the light until tonight. It looked pretty, and I immediately was reminded of those cute mini lanterns that some people put around their front doorstep. I eagerly walked forward to check it out. But that was the thing. Only a block away now, this circular light didn't look any more like those mini lanterns I thought of, or even just like a regular lantern, which would have satisfied my curiosity. The light was a sort of oval shape in the middle of the path, and it was floating. I kept moving closer, more annoyed than afraid, for the lack of confirmation of what I was looking at. It was still very pretty, with its pearly white brightness. Now, I was approaching the block it was on, and Hope wasn't looking any better. It was here that I realized this oval light was probably not a light at all, but instead, some shiny object reflecting all the apartment lights onto itself. I was now on the same block as the thing. The details of this shiny oval became clearer. It had structure, like an upside down teardrop like a head with a chin. I got a weird sense of sentience from it now, and my flustered curiosity turned into uneasiness. I began noticing another thing about it. Next to the shiny head, there was a downward arc in the shape of a lowercase r. It too was glistening the same way. At this point, I had zero idea what I was approaching. It felt like an arm. I couldn't help but believe whatever it was was crouching, leering its head and arm forward out from the dark end of the path, which would explain why it looked like pieces of the shiny thing were floating. This was the last straw in my gut, and I turned around and calmly walked back in the direction I came. I looked over my shoulder a few times, and nothing changed about it, although it looked bigger than when I first saw it. I decided to look down the dark end of the path on the opposite side of my apartment. All the apartment models were the same in my area, so maybe I'd seen the same shiny figure on that side, like some odd trick of light. But no, there was nothing shiny at all over there. Only on the path I took was the figure still there. Whatever it was, it didn't follow any kind of natural occurrence I knew and I didn't feel safe enough to stay outside any longer to figure it out. Has anyone else seen an unexplainable shiny thing in the dark like this? Could you find out what it was? During the day, the dark end of the path was a drab gray brick wall, which would lead off to another path that was 90 degrees to it, completely free from shiny obstructions. Earlier that same day, there were some cardboard boxes outside someone's home back there. In a box, there was one empty soda can. Could that one soda can have projected this much light? Thanks for listening. Though, unfortunately, I'm afraid to take my evening walks now. <laughs>